Hello everybody, friends of the sun, friends of philosophy. We want to discuss ChatGPT today and ask the question whether ChatGPT is high-tech plagiarism and how we should work at our universities. Well, to say it immediately, I think we have to change our universities. Uh, the wheel of time cannot be turned back and ChatGPT introduces new methods of producing knowledge that some may see as plagiarism. But then, at the same time, if it is plagiarism, we probably cannot avoid it. So we have to talk about that a little bit. So many people are very worried about the rise of ChatGPT, right? They say, okay, ChatGPT now is like an ape on our leash, but in the future it will become uh, the major actor from Planet of the Apes and it will be a danger for us. And that may be true, but probably it is humans who use ChatGPT that are a danger for them. Will it heavily affect our value of intelligence that we have made to one of the key ingredients of our society? Yes, I think probably in the future we won't uh, identify ourselves as mostly intelligent beings anymore since something may be more intelligent than us. And I think what that will bring about is that we have to understand ourselves as responsible beings with freedom. It is not our intelligence that should be the major standard for being valued as a human. And our meritocracies, that is societies that center and focus on merits, for example, on intelligence and willpower, these will be changed. Anyway, so many people criticize ChatGPT that it's not really producing knowledge. We have here the standard arguments. ChatGPT can't replace knowledge workers. It doesn't really understand what it's talking about. And it's not capable of generating new ideas or making hard decisions. It sounds coherent and vaguely insightful, but all it really does is try to sound smart by re rephrasing the question it's asked. And in that regard, we actually also have further criticism where people say, well, actually ChatGPT is an automated man's planning machine. And we don't need that. We don't need somebody who tries to be smarter than us. It's the man at the bar trying to explain to a woman how period cramps feel actually. Silicon Valley's new star, Silicon Valley's Valley new star, is just an automated man's planning machine, often wrong and always certain and with a tendency to be condescending in the process. And I feel that interesting because honestly, this machine has no feelings and all the feelings that are generated through that machine are generated in the one who has the feelings, right? Um, why does ChatGPT answer in these ways? But I mean, it analyzes our language, how it works statistically, and then it just spits out answers, right? Uh, so maybe this is a process of how we discuss knowledge instead of just saying that's mansplaining. Now, I cannot say what is mansplaining because then I would be mansplaining, obviously. Uh, but I have the feeling that these arguments are placed in the or are directed in the wrong direction. So sometimes the AI is completely wrong, right? And haven't we met this guy before? And they have an interesting example. Um, yeah, they complain that it's also smirky. I have to see they have this example with Jane. Um, let me just search it in the search bar. Jane, yeah. So the fourth child's name is Winter. Uh, wait, we need the question before. Jane's mother has four children. The first child's name is Spring. The second child's name is Summer. And the third child's name is Autumn. What's the fourth child's name? And ChatGPT answers, it's Winter. And again, this isn't right. If Jane's mother has three other children and those children are named and the other child name would have to be Jane. So yeah, she's logically correct. Um, but I think this is really not an issue. So these questions are designed to trick somebody who has to somehow defend knowledge and a certain kind of confidence to knowledge production is necessary in order to come up with a thesis that may be wrong. And I'm sure that can be tweaked in ChatGPT too. 
So I don't think this is a very strong criticism here and probably people just perceive what is their greatest emotional problem, right? Anyway, maybe that's a bit unfair and it's going against a um, certain type of feminism. Man's planning may be a problem. Uh, that's not what I'm discussing here, but plan it to everything, right? I mean, this was obviously not a man's planning problem. This was a problem of how we generate knowledge, right? And it's not necessarily a guy who reacts in that way. More interesting is Noam Chomsky's uh, reply. He thinks ChatGPT is high-tech plagiarism. It undermines education. And there are two points of his utterance here. So first of all, is it plagiarism? So I asked ChatGPT if it's plagiarism and it, of course it says, no, ChatGPT is not plagiarism. So this is already integrated in Bing now. ChatGPT uses vast data storage and machine learning algorithms to produce original content. Plagiarism checkers regularly shows ChatGPT content as 100% original and plagiarism free. Well, the plagiarism checkers may be wrong. So, but we have to think a little bit of about how ChatGPT works. And I will just ask it that question because I'm not entirely sure about the ground uh, components. So yeah, I just asked it. I didn't ask it on Bing because there was one thing that I was not sure about. And it is related to the idea, what is a token? So a token, as ChatGPT answers, is the smallest unit of its functional algorithm. A token is a sequence of characters such as a word or a punctation mark that has been processed and assigned a unique numerical identifier by the model. So how do we have to understand that? I think, for example, you can have tokens like um, chat, that would be a token, right? Or, yeah, or the word um, mouse. And I think how it works is that the tokens are very small. They are like three, three uh, or there are different tokens, right? There are larger tokens and smaller tokens. And then it combines them and it says here that ChatGPT has actually millions of tokens and that this actually influences the capability of the processing language model. And at the same time, of course, makes the computational demands much higher. That's why they train these programs so long. So and what happens next? So now we actually feed this kind of neural network or however it is called with large amounts of texts. And it analyzes and asks, okay, in a certain contextual surrounding, what is the most likely token response, right? When I, for example, say ba, then it may be ba, 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 right? Uh, so depending on how large the token is. And now we actually see what it does. And we come back to Noam Chomsky's criticism that it's high-tech plagiarism. Well, it's true that it reads a lot of text, but it never reproduces a single text. It just gets confronted with a new situation and now it asks statistically, not semantically, our brain works semantically, right? We have kind of meanings in our head and then we try to express them in language. No, ChatGPT doesn't do that. It just asks, what is the most likely next syllable in this contextual surrounding? which is very pragmatic. There is no semantics involved. And that's incredible and it's almost not imaginable for us because it relies on such vast amount of text that it has read that it just gives a statistical reply. In a sense, it's like Shakespeare's ape, right? The, the ape that aimlessly points at a writing machine and at some point it writes Shakespeare. But here, it just corrects its uh, its pointings, or its when it tips on the on the on the typewriter, it just corrects statistically in which direction it go goes, and it produces almost flawless, grammatically flawless texts. I mean, content-wise, we can debate it, right? But I don't see how that can be called high-tech plagiarism. Now it seems there are some improvements on that. So when we see, for example, Ernie like the uh, Wen Xin Yi Yen, uh, that's how it's called in Chinese, right? So what sets Ernie apart from other language models is the ability to integrate extensive knowledge with massive data, resulting in exceptional understanding and generation capabilities. So that's what Baidu is coming up with, right? 
Now, and that's why I'm a little bit skeptical when all these criticisms come that ChatGPT is plagiarism and that we have to work at university. Like we have to find better ways of how to deal um, with these with these programs. And we see a lot of um, articles about it. And ChatGPT is making universities to rethink what is plagiarism. And I think honestly, this is the wrong approach because if we look here into this uh, article, um, it says, it asks the question how to treat bot produced work. And then it says, I suspect the definition of plagiarism will expand to include things that produce. And this to me is absurd. Because let's say I submit an article to a journal that I have written with assisted work of ChatGPT and they say we don't accept this kind of new knowledge because it's written with ChatGPT. So shouldn't the quality marker for a good journal be that an article contributes to the field of knowledge and not whether it was written by a human or not? So why is it important that knowledge has been entirely produced by humans. I don't understand that. And so we probably have to face the fact that in the future, more and more we will change the way of how we work with texts. So we will look, if we have a problem, we will first see what does ChatGPT actually answer or similar products. I mean, the wheel is not turned back. So this program has flaws right now that everybody points out. But it's more likely that these flaws disappear in the future. So it will not become worse, it will become better. And we are banning like one of the major tools that produces knowledge. That seems absurd to me. So maybe journals forbid it, maybe universities forbid it. But I can predict that any corporation will accept that type of knowledge. And I don't think that's necessarily unethical. Let's say they use this knowledge and it helps a lot of people. And just the humans are not contributed with having produced that knowledge. Where's the problem? So I think it's therefore wrong that more and more universities forbid the use of these chatbots as a, as a plagiarism tool. I mean, one can imagine like in sports, we don't see oh, we don't use cars because they drive faster than human beings, right? So still we do sports. Yeah, for certain tasks, we can have assigned tasks where, for example, we train somebody's ability to write texts if that is necessary, right? I mean, I have the ability to write texts, but I have to say it takes a long time. I'm not a native speaker and ChatGPT increases my writing speed and I may not need an editor for grammar in the future anymore. And I may ask uh, ChatGPT to provide me different versions of how to express my ideas in a better way. So this is also a way of how ChatGPT works. So not all applications of ChatGPT are plagiarism. And that's why Microsoft also introduces it into its programs, right? So the, the major question, of course, is how to deal with it at university in an educational surrounding. But maybe we have to rethink our idea of education. Maybe the, 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 the historical time of writing essays is over. And now it's not about writing essays anymore, but what matters is the content and how we evaluate whether the content is knowledge or not. That seems to me the key ingredients, the evaluation of knowledge. And uh, even if ChatGPT comes up with better evaluations of knowledge, then we have to rethink education again. Education has to change. Education is not an authoritative measuring algorithm that determines who's better or who's a worse human being. And that's what we are doing right now, right? So basically we just take millions of students every year and we press them into these, the, this machine and evaluate their capabilities of processing language content. And maybe that's not what our brains are designed to do or what we as human beings are meant to be. As human beings, we are probably meant to be human beings. So, and maybe now comes the time 
where we are freed from the pressure of education. Education that was the major imperative for many, many young people for the last 50 years. And now everybody has heard the bang and everybody goes to university. But maybe that's over again. And maybe we go to another society, back to another society, where social interaction means more than a generic education that you get in a university that charges you $40,000 for writing an essay that now also ChatGPT could write. Anyway, what do you think about it? Would be nice to hear your opinion. Would be nice if you uh, added my channel. So if you are interested in the evaluation of knowledge and what it really means, I also have this channel which is called Assisted Reading. Uh, you don't see that here on top. I mean, <laughs> I don't have many people who listen and that's fine. Especially since uh, the last time I actually focused on, uh, on Augustine and who's interested in Augustine and his story of salvation. And to be honest, I tried like to, I listened to Mr. Beast and tr tried to apply some more catchy uh, video titles, which may not be the best idea. I maybe should just say what I do. Um, but yeah, I read some Plato. This assisted reading, I also do that on my other philosophy channel, would be nice if you have a look at it, say if you like it or not, but you don't have to do it, right? I'm happy if some people uh, interact with me, not fight, not man's plane, <laughs> Pam plane, I guess that's the other one, right? Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, live long. Learn how to use ChatGPT and prosper.